Hello, and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is PCB way. When I got back from open sauce this last week, I had two boxes from DHL waiting for me. One box was enough printed components that I can have uh, two setups of, of fingers that I can put into a little frame that shows the before and the after. So when anybody asks me, you know, well, how much work does it really take to get from, from the raw condition into a finished assembled, then I'll have something as a reference to show them. Uh, super, something that was super neat is these were all reorders of the parts. And it's been probably about seven, eight months since the last time I ordered these. And I, I logged into my account and was able to just click the reorder button and, and poof, they show up. Now, something, something that, I mean, expected, but super cool is from batch to batch, they are exactly the same. So parts that you were to do one year, you order them, say, a year later, they're going to come exactly in the same, in the same way that you received them the first time. Uh, even ordered a, another set of medials. Uh, everything on these looks just amazing. You know, they do take a little bit of file work just to get all of the fitment, but that is totally to be expected. You know, and since printing is not machining, I'm going to leave these parts at their current dimensions just to be safe to where, you know, if you have something that is say printed and it ends up undercutting just a little bit, then it's still a usable part and you're just filing it into tolerance. I mean, you gotta figure, you don't, on this project, you don't need uh, Remington manufacturing and, and repeatability. You know, this metacarpal base will only ever sit this proximal one and this proximal two. So it's not that you have to go for a number particularly, you just have to go for a fit. And I think that's going to be something critical on, on these parts when somebody that's not a machinist is putting them together. But I tell you, I'm so excited. I, I really think that this project is, is coming to the point that it's going to be a thing to where in the, in the near future that somebody's going to be able to just order parts and then put themselves together a device. Uh, also within those parts, I ordered, I ordered the first articles of the winder assembly. So here is a base, here is a cap, here is the swivel, the all important fork for the grip pattern selection, and then the two parts that make up the core. Now I'm gonna be supplying the, the turned parts, the rollers, and then the reversing sprocket. But I, I have to say, you know, uh, the only, the only post processing that I had to do aside from the threading for the 440 bolts was I had to pass the six millimeter reamer through the two holes for the bearings and just take off just a little bit of the flash from when they glass bead blasted the surface of it. Other than that, everything fit perfectly. I gotta say the machining tolerances and the finish on this stuff was just awesome. Um, Another neat little touch is they vacuum bag all of the parts. Some kind of cool is no longer do you have to do all of the dimensioning and, you know, say like if you're going to do like full files on it with you know, all your critical dimensions. All I did for these parts is I uploaded a dot step file and I tell you, everything came out just perfect. So if you do by chance have a machine application project, maybe give them a shot. It, it has gotten so much simpler than what it used to be for, for the prep on this type of project. It's, it's really, it's no more difficult than just uploading uh, the STL that you would for a printed component. Just now you're doing it as a dot .step file. Um, I'll let you know how these go together. I'm going to end up building another complete set of components just so I can try you know, everything is going to be first articles from PCB way. Uh, so now we have fingers and winder. Next thing I'll be working on is the Gaffney with the cartoid latch for the grip pattern selection. And then a redo of the gimbal. 
So I ended up adding a little bit more clearance for the radius and ulna bone, uh, which has worked out pretty good, but this is a machined one. I'm gonna be, for the kit, I'm gonna end up doing these as a um, SLS mag aluminum. I really do like the, the weight and the wear characteristics that I'm getting out of that as a material. You know, originally I was a little bit leery about, you know, how it was going to, how it was going to last with a pin boss situation. But, you know, on, so I've been using this hand for a little over a year now. And a lot of these finger components are the mag aluminum. I haven't had any problem with the material wearing. And, you know, I only have about, what do I have? A month and a half on this hand. And so far, it's great. And I haven't, I haven't done any clear coating, coating, any hard anodizing or anything. I, I, do have, uh, I do have it set up to where in the future, probably after Rapid and, and I you know, finish doing all of my you know, maker fairs and stuff, I'll, I'll send out probably this set of fingers to uh, Cerakote to have them colored. They have a product called MicroSlick. It's an anti-friction coating that I'll end up trying having them put on uh, the wear points of those fingers. We'll see how that goes. So the big news of this video were the machine components uh, came back just perfect. And I gotta say, you know, for just a dot step file, the process is super easy. Uh, definitely give them a shot if you have this type of thing. And, you know, printing from from one set to the other, the mag aluminum is just awesome. If you're going to be in the LA area in the next week, um, I'm going to Rapid TCT. If you see me walking around, uh, stop me, say hi. Um, other than that, let me know what you think in the comment section. Thanks for watching. No, he is just like vicious on this thing. Gonna get it some more.